Hello, I'm David Kentish. I'm introducing my stories to you so that you can enjoy them in video format no matter where you are. If you would like more information about myself or my stories, which I write, you may visit my website. Beside the Billabong. So much has happened beside the Billabong since last we saw the four bush friends with their raft. Join me again as we visit with them once more. Episode 9 is titled Scarred by the Bushfire. It was ages since it last rained. Warrigal and his friends thought it was a long time anyway. The level of the water in the billabong is getting low and they could walk out a long way from the old shoreline which they've become accustomed to. There's still plenty of water for Pothara the platypus to swim around in. In fact he's out there swimming right now. He is showing off how well he has learnt to swim. His dad had taught him. He swims around in circles. Then he would double back and swim in the other direction. Next he dives down to the bottom and picks up a stone in his mouth. As he reaches the surface he swings his head sideways and throws the stone at the others who are watching him from the shoreline. He didn't hit anyone, but he does like the fun of throwing the stone. Sometimes when he comes up he jumps clear of the surface of the water, does a backflip before entering the water again without a splash. The other friends are watching Bathara as he shows them what he's able to do. Boy gee Bathara, you can do that very well exclaimed Keyswook the Kookaburra. I can fly but I can't swim like you. I'll say, agreed Pillig of the Possum. You are a good swimmer and I like the acrobatics too. And those new tricks are great, cheered on Tilp of the Tortoise. Well that's the best tricks I've ever seen, called Warrigal the Bunyip. After a while Bathara is getting tired so he swims over to where the others are waiting by the shoreline and joins them as they rest. There are some tall reeds nearby which offer them some shade but the shady trees are now a long way from the edge of the water. Warrigal lays down in the water to cool himself off for a few minutes but he preferred to stand. Tilpa walks in the water for a short time just to keep herself cool. Pilika doesn't like the water but he does stay close to the others, as he is still just a bit timid to be by himself. Keysbrook is sitting on Warrigal's head again, so he can keep a sharp lookout for Omeo the Olive Python. Omeo doesn't seem to be around today, but he keeps his sharp eye out for him just the same. The dry wind is blowing from the inland and it is hot too. The older animals had told the younger ones about the danger of bushfires but none of the friends had seen a fire so far and don't have any experience with it. Warrigal remembered that his dad had said in the morning and he told the others, My dad says that when the wind blows like this that we might have a bushfire. He has seen one before and he said it's very hot, dirty and smelly. Yeah, said Pilliga, I heard that too. My mum said that she had the end of her tail burnt one time in a bushfire. She says it's sore all the time now. The others don't know anything about bushfires and they listen to the stories that Pilliger and Warrigal are telling them. The five friends work as a team and tie the tops of the reeds together so it makes a better shelter for them to rest in the shade of the hot sun. They lay down in the shade which they had just completed and presently they are asleep. A little time passes and soon the sun is directly above. Some of the friends stirred, but do not wake up for a while. A long way off, on the other side of the big river, a kangaroo hops along and dislodges a few rocks. They bounced off another rock in the grass, and these made a spark. The spark falls onto some dry grass, and soon there is a small fire. Because the grass is so dry, there is not a lot of smoke, but the fire burned its way along the, with the breeze fanning it, Presently it comes into contact with some shrubs and bushes which make some dark smoke. 
The more the wind fans the fire, the greater it becomes. Soon the fire is burning in the trees and the smoke is becoming very dark and thick. The heat of the recent days caused all of the old leaves and grass to become dry and with the breeze behind the fire, it soon takes hold of a large area along the bank of the big river. It isn't long before the trees have flames leaping at the tops of them and then the breeze is blowing the sparks of the fire across the river. When the sparks reach the other side of the river, some of the dry grasses there begin burning too. Soon this fire has spread to the shrubs and bushes. It isn't long before these trees are on fire too, and this causes some very heavy black smoke to rise up into the air. Now both sides of the big river are on fire, and there's plenty of smoke. With so much smoke around, soon the friends become aware of this funny smell. Warrigal is the first to wake up and notices the funny smell, and then as he stands up, he can see the smoke in the air. Wake up, wake up, he cried to the others. Something unusual is going on, and you need to have a look. The others took a little time to wake up, but soon they can smell the smoke as well. What is that awful stink? asked Pathara. Boy, it really does smell, doesn't it? exclaimed Pilliger. I bet that is a bushfire, said Tilpa. I'll fly up in the air for a bit and see what I can find, Keesbrook told him. Then he spread his wings and flies up into the air. Presently he's back again, coughing and sputtering. As far as I can see there is smoke, so there must be a big fire somewhere. Warrigal told them all, I think we should play it safe and go home to our parents. They all know what we should be doing. Off they went on their way home to ask their parents what they should do. But before they could go too far, there are flames close by them and they become frightened. So they turn back and huddle together in the water. They are now getting hot from the flames too and their eyes are stinging from the effect of the smoke. Because the water had receded a long way from the edge of the billabong, there is a large patch of dry sand so the fire stops approaching the friends as they huddle together. But the fire is still burning all around them. It seems that Warrigal is taking charge and he suggests that they stay where they are as it looks like this is the safest place to be. They move out into the water as far as they can and stand far from the reeds as some of them are burning too. It seems to be taking forever for the fire to pass over them. As the smoke begins to clear they can see the edge of the billabong again. Most of the trees have smoke coming from them and the grass under them is all black from the fire. The shrubs where they had walked by to get to the water are now burnt black too. Everywhere they looked, there are just blackened skeletons of bushes, as all of the leaves have been burnt and gone. It looks like everything is burnt in the fire. Is everyone alright? asked Warrigal as he stood up with the water up to his waist. I'm alright, but I was a bit frightened, replied Bathara. I just went under the water when I got hot from the fire. And my hard shell stopped a few sparks, but then I rolled over in the water, so it's okay now, said Tipper. A few of my feathers were singed in the heat, but I think I'm alright too, called Keesbrook. Billiger was the last to reply. I think I might have something wrong with my ear. It hurts, he said with a sniffle. Tilpa is the closest to him, and she had a look at his ear. Yes, said Tilpa. I think that you have some singed fur on the top of your ear, Pilliger. Sure enough, poor old Pilliger's ear had the tip singed by the fire. It hurt a lot, and he is upset. Now that the bush fire had passed them, they all returned home to their parents. A few days later, they are together again at the edge of the water in the billabong. They can see a long way now that there is no grass and no shrubs to block their view. They can see all of the burnt trees, the burnt reeds close to where they had sheltered from the fire, and the skeletons of the bushes that are all around them. There is a lot of black soot blowing around in the breeze, but it looks like the fire is not burning anymore. Even with Pilliger's sore ear, the friends reckon that they have gotten off very lightly from their first ever bushfire. I am so pleased that they're all okay, aren't you? How did you feel when you saw your bushfire? Were you scared too? I was. That's all there is for episode 9.
We'll be back shortly with episode 10 in just a diff or two. So stay tuned.